Hello, welcome to our second live presentation in our 2024 adopt a ship program. My name is Michelle. I'm joining you from Canadian Geographic Education in Ottawa, Ontario, on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Algonquin peoples. And I'm so happy to be here with you again for today's special event. If you joined us for last week's presentation, I hope you enjoyed learning about the ways in which the Canadian Coast Guard contributes to the safety of life at sea, to safe and efficient navigation, and to the protection of marine environments. And if you didn't catch us live, a recording of the presentation is now available on our website. I'll remind you about the activity booklet that's also on our website, which you can use to adopt and track a ship of your, your choice from the Coast Guard fleet. And don't forget, we're running a classroom contest where we're asking you to put together a collage that explains all of the different things that you learned from the Coast Guard uh, for your chance to win a great prize pack for your class. And finally, if there's something that you really want to ask the commissioner, um, you can by submitting your questions using the form on our website, which we'll share during our interview with Commissioner Peltier during the last of our five presentations. So today we're visiting with a representative of the Canadian Coast Guard College. And don't forget, at any point during their presentation, you can add your questions or comments in the chat window, or you can save them for the live question and answer period at the end. So let's meet our special guest, Ms. Jean-Marie Sherlock, who's joining us today from Sydney, Nova Scotia. Jean-Marie, welcome. We're really happy to have you. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. This is the second year in a row for me at Adopt a Ship. Last year's presentation was lots of fun, so we're happy that you could come back with us again for another year. Thank you. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll bring your presentation up on screen and you can take it away. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Jean Marie Sherlock. I am a recruitment officer at the Canadian Coast Guard College. I started there about six years ago and I was an administration clerk when I first started, uh, but then I kind of wanted to spread the word about the college and all the great programs we have. So I poked my nose over to recruitment department and talked to the management there and ended up with this job as a recruitment officer. So now I get to travel around to classrooms and attend special events like this. And today I'm really excited to show you guys the Canadian Coast Guard College. This is the college mascot, Echo, and he's going to tag along for part of this tour today. So you'll see him pop up now and then. So there's only one Canadian Coast Guard College, and it's located all the way on the east coast of Canada. So if you want to come to the college or you want to study there, you're going to have to come to Sydney, beautiful Cape Breton Island. And I'm going to show you. This is our main city, if you can see that red laser dot. And then about a 10 minute drive over here is where you find the Coast Guard College. So in Cape Breton, we have lots to do if you like to do outside activities. And we have lots to do if you like to do things like bowling and restaurants and movie theaters. So we have a little bit of everything. This is our college campus, it's quite large. I'm going to show you some highlights of some of the different areas around the college. So this is our machine shop. This is where you would find Marine Engineering Officer Cadets doing their training. This is the residence. So this is where you would live if you were attending here. You would have a private room within the residence. Our wellness center. Our academic building, which has labs and classrooms. The galley, this is everyone's favorite spot. This is where they feed you. Really good food. People love to get to the galley. And then our waterfront training center. This is where you find people who are studying marine navigation. 
So what can you learn at the Canadian Coast Guard College? I know last week you met Tim Rayner from MCTS, if you were able to tune in last week. I know a lot of you were pretty impressed with all of the things the MCTS officers do. But did you know that to become an MCTS officer, you would actually have to come to the Canadian Coast Guard College? So that is one of the programs we offer. It's a six month program. You would live at the college, study at the college. And when you graduate from that program, you go to your um, center. One of we have centers all across Canada. So you would go to whatever center you're assigned to and you do some on the job training and then you become a fully certified Marine communications officer. But we also have other programs at the college our officer training program. So this is a four year program to become an officer in the Canadian Coast Guard fleet. Within that program, you have two options. So you can become a Marine engineering officer. So if you think about the bottom of the ship, all of the systems that make the vessel go, that's what Marine engineer officers would look after. And Marine navigation officers, think of the top of the ship. So they're up high, up in the bridge of the ship. Marine navigation officers would be driving the ship. So if that's something that piques your interest, that's the program that you would look at taking. So it looks like Echo is wondering what it would be like to study marine engineering. So we're gonna take a look at that first. We're gonna pop into our machine shop that we saw earlier. So again, think about the bottom of that ship. It's like a small town down there. Everything you would need to run a small town is in the bottom of that ship. And our marine engineers have to study and learn everything they need to be able to keep all of those systems up and running. So I'm going to show you some of the things that they learn. The first of which is tools and machinery. And if you've never used a tool before, don't worry. We start you with the smallest tools we have, and then you work your way up to the big machinery. Engines, if you like to get your hands dirty and do hands-on work, you can take engines apart, you'll put them back together. And then we have welding. So you might be thinking, if I'm gonna be an engineer, why would I have to know how to weld? So when you're out at sea, there's no stores to buy what you need. So sometimes you might need a part or you might need a tool and you kind of get to be like an inventor because sometimes you have to think of your own ideas to make a tool or a part. And welding is what you would do to make those parts. You would also fix broken pipes. You can make watertight seals with welding. So it's used for all kinds of things on the vessel. Electronics. Electronics is used for almost everything. All of the instruments on the bridge, the engines, the machinery in the engine rooms. They learn about electricity. So that's a vital part of a ship's operation. Just like when you're home, if the power goes out, you know, it's dark, it's cold, you get hungry because we can't cook anything. So that would be even worse if you were out at sea. So you're gonna learn all about electricity. Hydraulics. So they control the steering of the ship stabilization of the ship so that it's not rocking too much and it also controls a lot of the deck equipment like uh, winches and lifts and then they take everything they learn and they go into this classroom which is called a propulsion simulator and the simulator can replicate any kind of a problem that can happen in the engine room of a ship so here's a question. Maybe some teachers can take some answers for us. Can anyone think of a problem that might happen in the engine room of a ship that a marine engineering officer would have to handle? I think our our classes are just thinking about their answers, but can I can I answer? What? You can answer absolutely. What about uh, like an onboard systems failure? Absolutely, system failures, a fire, a blackout, 
even total engine failure. But the great thing is when you're taking the marine engineering program, you get to try out all of these problems in the safety of your classroom. So you'll have an engine room fire in this simulator. So by the time you ever go out to a real vessel, you would have already been trained on how to handle all of those situations. So Echo's impressed with engineering, but now he'd like to take a look at navigation. So we're gonna pop down to our boat shed which is right down at the waterfront training facility that we saw earlier. So we're gonna take a look at some of the things that the navigation officers learn. So knot tying is a big one. They have to learn 50 different kinds of knots and splices. Search and rescue techniques. So here you see someone being pulled out of the water. Coast Guard never goes in the water to save people we pull people out. So there's lots of search and rescue techniques that have to be learned. Environmental response. So here they're learning how to place a boom, which is that yellow circle you see. So when oil gets spilled into the water, the boom is laid and it contains the oil so it doesn't spread until we get the resources there to be able to vacuum the oil up off the surface of the water. Radio communications, so you saw that last week with MCTS officers, you would report mayday calls, get weather alerts, you could get uh, report dangers in the water, or even report marine life because they are a priority. So if there's marine life that's in the way of where a vessel is going, the vessel actually has to pull over it and wait for that marine life to pass. Crane operation, this is so you can lower your vessels into the water or take them out. Sometimes they're lifted out of the water to be repaired or painted or put away for winter storage. And everyone's favorite is navigating various size vessels. So if you're in navigation, you're gonna learn how to sail down on the waterfront. You're gonna move up to the FRCs, which are everyone's favorite. They're fast, they're fun. And then sometime in your career after you graduate, you could end up driving a vessel as large as this. So this is a massive ship. It's our biggest icebreaker called the Louis Saint Laurent. And just like the engineers had simulators, the navigation officers have simulators as well. So these can replicate the same thing, anything that can happen with navigation. So it could be big storms, big waves, iceberg, even darkness. So years ago, we didn't have all of this technology and navigation officers actually used the stars to get to where they wanted to go. The North Star is the most important star in the sky when it comes to finding your way. And we're gonna learn how to find it. So we're all gonna do this today. Uh, lots of people would like to navigate by the stars, but they think it's very complicated. It's actually faster easier and more fun than using a compass. You can learn to find the North Star in less than two minutes. So locating the star, the North Star on a, a clear night is easy. The first step is finding the Big Dipper. So some of you probably already know how to do that, or you've already heard of the Big Dipper. But for those of you who haven't, the Big Dipper is made out of seven stars. It looks like a large spoon. Three stars make the handle and four stars make the spoon. But if you're looking at your screen, you're probably thinking, how on earth am I gonna find a spoon out of all of those stars? But if you look closely, there's seven that are just a little bit brighter than the rest. And if you look at both sides now, you can see where the stars here create that Big Dipper. So step one, you find the Big Dipper, then you create this imaginary line that goes across the top of the spoon and you just follow that straight until you find the brightest star you see. That is the North Star. And the way you tell to make sure you have the right star is the North Star will actually be the first star in the handle of the Little Dipper. 
So the Big Dipper and Little Dipper are the same. They're just a different size. Follow that straight up, and there's your handle. So that's how you find the North Star. That's something you can try at home tonight if the sky is clear and the stars are out. You can get your family out, and I'm sure they'll be quite impressed if you can show them how to find the North Star. Something both programs have in common is C-phase training. So a regular university, you, if you're going for four years, you're going to be sitting behind a desk for four years. And with Coast Guard College, you get to go to C. So for navigation officers, 15 months of your four years is spent at sea, learning hands-on on real vessels. And for engineers, it's nine months. The pictures you see on your screen are pictures that were taken by officer cadets that went out on their sea phase. A lot of them were lucky enough to go to the Arctic, which is a place that most people never ever get to see. Most people never get to see polar bears. So you can see a lot of the country, again, that most people will never get to see. And if you keep your eyes peeled and you're lucky enough to get to the Arctic, you never know who you might see. So now we have a question. So now that you've seen a lot of the skills that are needed for engineering and navigation, can some of you guess what high school subjects you would have to take if you want to be a marine engineering officer or a marine navigation officer? Or Michelle can guess. Okay, I'll go first while they're preparing their answers. Okay. I'm going to guess science definitely but science is a big one. Oh, we have another answer we have math definitely great answer so math and science are actually the two biggest they're the most important courses to take throughout your junior high uh, junior high and high school so in order to get into the Coast Guard College you need grade 12 advanced math you need grade 12 physics and you need grade 11 chemistry if you're taking engineering. You do not need chemistry if you're taking the navigation. And then you also need your grade 12 English or grade 12 French. You don't have to be bilingual, but you do need to have grade 12 in either language. So now I'm going to hand things over to Michelle, who has a video. And the video is just going to show some uh, instructors and former students doing some of the training that I showed you in those previous clips.
All right, thank you, Michelle. So as you can see there, with uh, learning at the Coast Guard, you get some book work, you get work in the simulators, and you get lots of hands-on training. So that really breaks up your four years of university. You get a degree at the end, you also get a diploma. So I'm gonna show you a few more places around the college. So this is a picture of a room. So if you had your own private room, this is what the room would look like. When you live at the college, you live in what we call clusters. So the room you see on your screen, there's eight of those rooms in one cluster. And then there's shared bathrooms. There's a common room where everyone can sit around. There's a large TV. Um, everyone has their own temperature control. The rooms are a little smaller and the hallways and stairwells are a little smaller because the clusters are designed to replicate life on a ship. So the rooms are about 10 feet by 10 feet. And again, stairways and things are a little bit smaller, just so you get an idea of what it would be like if you were on ship. We also have a planetarium, but you'll already know how to find the North Star, but you will learn lots more about all of the other stars. We have a swimming pool, which is in our wellness center. We have cardio rooms and weight rooms, which are also in the wellness center. We play intramural sports. And we participate in a lot of community events. So we do a Cabot Trail Relay. We do dragon boat races. We do parades, all kinds of things with the community. And the last thing I want to show you is some of the benefits of choosing a career with the Canadian Coast Guard. So I'm going to pop a question out there again. Most people spend about $50,000 on their university education. So if you think about everything you learned today and that you live at the college, I'm just wondering if anyone would have a guess at how much it would cost to attend the Coast Guard College. Oh, we don't have any guesses this time. No guessers. What do you think, Michelle? Well, I know the answer. Is it fair for me to say? <laughs> it's fair. Echo knows, you know, it's out there. It's free. Yeah, she's right. It's absolutely free to go to the Canadian Coast Guard College. So you have free education, free accommodations, free food, free textbooks and uniforms, and you also have medical and dental. So if you need a prescription, you get sick or you, have, you need a filling, that's all covered. And you get pension, which just means you don't have to work till you're really, really old. You can retire when you're young. And on top of that, we pay you. So instead of you getting a loan and paying for your school, we actually pay you money every month so that you have some spending money while you're at the college. And if you like time off, everyone likes their summer vacation from school. If you like to have a lot of time off. Check this out. In a regular job, most people will get two to four weeks paid vacation in a year. So you work and you work and you work. And then if you're very, very lucky, you'll get paid vacation at some point. I'm going to show you how it works in Coast Guard. When you graduate and you go out into fleet on the ship, you work for one month. Then you're off for a month. But the wonderful thing is you're paid the same for both. Then you work a month. You're off a month. You work a month. Now watch this. You take your month off. 
the four weeks vacation we pay you for and your month off. So now you're off for three months in a row and then the rest fills in like this. So you work for five months of the year, you get paid for 12 months of the year and you have seven months off to do whatever you want. So that's a lot of time to have off. Everyone wants to make a lot of money. Everyone likes to have a lot of time off, but wouldn't it be great to have all of that and a job that's full of adventure and a job that you can feel proud of? With Coast Guard, you can have that. If you look at this picture here, this happened about two hours away from the Canadian Coast Guard College in a place called Shetty Camp. We had 15 crab vessels that were trapped in ice. Uh, it becomes very dangerous because the ice can crush those vessels, putting the lives at risk of all of the crew on each of those ships. 15 lives a day is the average number of people that are saved by Canadian Coast Guard every single day. So that is the number one reason why Coast Guard was formed. And that's just part of what they do. So I know that in the next few weeks, you are going to learn more about Coast Guard and all the different operations they perform. And if you think this might be a career for you or something that you like to do, remember that it all starts here at the Canadian Coast Guard College. So that wraps up everything I have to share with you. I hope you enjoyed learning about the college. We'll open it up for questions in case anyone has anything they want to ask. We have a quiet group today. <laughs> I think they're just getting their questions ready for you. So I'm going to take, I'll take your slides off the screen so that we can okay. see everybody and we'll, we'll bring some classes on camera with us. We have two classes who have joined us today to ask their questions on camera. Um, and Jean Marie, I just wanted to say thank you for a beautiful presentation and, you know, the information that you shared about the opportunities at the college. I didn't have that kind of information when I was in grade school. So I'm just thrilled that our students watching today know about the college and the opportunities and the experiences that are available there. So thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. I grew up, I told you earlier, I grew up, this, I grew up just up the street from the college and None of the people, my brothers, our friends, no one knew. We knew the college was there, but no one knew what it was for, that we didn't know there was opportunities there. So I love that I have the opportunity to make people aware because it's for anyone across Canada who is interested in that type of career. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so let's go to our first on-screen class. We're gonna bring up Mrs. Bartlett's class. Um, so can you tell us where you are in Canada and can you share your questions with me? Hi, everybody. Uh, we are in Richmond Hill, Ontario. Nice to have you with us. Hi. Uh, All right. And does anybody have a question? Erin, uh, go ahead. Uh, so what is your favorite ship, Jean Marie? My favorite ship is the Sir William Alexander because that is the ship that I did some training on. So it's the only I've been on. I've been on a couple, but I haven't been out to sea on anyone except for the Sir William Alexander, and I loved it. So it was it was really fun. It was really cool to be down in the engine room and up on the bridge. So that would be my favorite. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Eric? Is there any specific requirements to get into the college? Yes. So you have to have the grade 12 advanced math, grade 12 physics. You need grade 11 chemistry if you're going to take the engineering and you need grade 12 English or math. Other than that, you just have to, when you apply, you would do a written assessment, then you would do an interview and then there's steps from there, security clearances, medical checks, but it goes one step onto the next, onto the next. It's a little progressive, it takes a little bit of time. 
but you start with those requirements from the courses. Awesome, thank you. Rowan? Really? Do you get the weekends off in that schedule of the work and the week and the off time? So I have a shore-based job. I have weekends off, uh, but sometimes I travel a lot, so I'm, I'm not home on the weekends. And then for the people that work, it, it's actually a 28 day schedule, 28 days on, 28 days off. So when you're doing your 28 days on the vessel, you work every single day. But then when you get home, when the 28 days are finished, you have 28 days to do whatever you want. You can travel, you can watch videos, you can play games, you can ride your bike, you can do anything you want. It's your time to do anything at all. Awesome. Uh, Donya? Um, I have two questions. Number one, how long does it take to teach a student, like the average time to teach a student all 50 knots? And what are some examples of the knots that you teach them? Did you hear those questions? No, I'm sorry, I did not. Uh, what is the average time it takes to um, teach somebody all 50 knots? And what are some of the different types of knots that uh, students learn? So they learn their knots progressively over their four years of training. They don't just get and learn them all in one, you know, one week or one month. So it's hard for me to answer how long. I would just say the four years within that program, they will learn all the knots. And I am not an expert in knots. I do know the bowline knot is the most common knot that they use, um, but the different knots are used in different situations. That's great. Okay. We'll take one more question one more. and then yeah. we're gonna go to the next class. Okay, thanks, one more. How fast do the vessels go? So that will be a question maybe for next week's people who are actually out in the fleet. Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I will absolutely find out what our fastest vessel is and the slowest they can go. And I will send that information to Michelle and she can forward it on next week. Great. Thank you. Thanks for letting us uh, ask questions. Oh, you're Thanks welcome. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now we're going to go to our second class. So we have Tompkin Road Middle School with us. Hi, everyone. Hi. 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 So glad you can join us. Okay. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Question one. I have a question. Why is there only one college? Why is there only one college? That's a great question. Um, I think because we have to keep our numbers relatively, I don't want to say low, but it's so expensive and our college has so much that we offer. It's really only affordable to have one college in one area that we can take everybody to the same college and we make sure that everyone is learning the same things from the same instructor. And Coast Guard, people who go through the Coast Guard College program are top notch in the world. Our, we have a world leading program. And so we like to keep it all under one roof so we can control what everyone is learning. That's a good question. Okay, Cara, ask your question. How old do you need to be to go to the college? Did you hear that? How Sorry, old, I didn't hear. No. How old do you have to be to go to the college? So you have to graduate from high school. So as long as you have your grade 12, you can start applying to go to get into the college. Okay. Why? Why is there only one? Why is the cafeteria? Why is the cafeteria called called the galley? The galley. How? Why is the cafeteria called the galley? Okay, because it's called a galley on the ship. Well, I don't know. Okay. So that is why. Well, okay. yeah, that's why. Okay. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi.
So, what does the end, how much do they get paid? How much so starting pay? off at this time, they make around $72,000 a year. But by the time you would graduate and go through the program, it would be more than that because every year it changes and the salary goes up. And then our icebreaker, because we're following an icebreaker out of uh, Quebec right now, is what do they do? Because we have no ice right now. So what are they doing on the, sh the icebreaker if they're not breaking ice? <laughs> well, the, the icebreakers can do lots of other operations. Sometimes they're put on search and rescue watch. Uh, sometimes they're doing environmental response. So there's lots of other things that they can do if there's no ice. A lot of times, too, it's an opportunity to dock the ship and make any repairs that have to be done. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us. Bye bye. bye. Have, a Have a good day. I love you. Bye, guys. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> Such good questions. <laughs> we have two more for you, Jean Marie, in the chat. So the okay. first one is. Um, from JVC middle years class, it says, is it a very stressful job? So are, are the jobs that you obtain after graduating from the Coast Guard College, are they stressful? So for the most part, they are not. Uh, I've been, I haven't been on the ship long enough to talk about years of experience, but from what I hear and what I talk to people, the job is not stressful. It has stressful situations. So you might be on the vessel for 28 days and nothing happens at all, but maybe one of those days there's a big storm or maybe something happens in the engine room. So it's stressful for a very short time for a little while. But the job itself is not every single day you're feeling stressed about going to work. They have a pretty great relationship, good teams that work together, uh, fun environment for the most part. Um, you know, but a, a, a job that's important. And so it can be stressful when things go wrong for those short periods of time. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and last question for you. Um, it says, is the Coast Guard a branch of the Navy or is it completely separate? We are completely separate. So Coast Guard falls under Department of Fisheries and Oceans. We do, however, work with the Navy. We work with other organizations like the RCMP, military. Whenever there's uh, search and rescue efforts, um, the Navy can be pulled in. So we do work with them, but we are totally separate. So with Coast Guard, you're going to stay in Canadian waters and you're never going to be in combat and you're never going to be deployed somewhere to fight. So I always say we're the happy people on the red and white boat. We're just protecting the environment. We're protecting marine life. And we're saving mariners who are in danger on the water. All the other stuff, we hand that over to RCMP and, and our great military to take care of. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for answering all these great questions. And again, thank you for your presentation. I've, I've learned even more than I already knew about the college. So it's, it's wonderful to know all of the different opportunities that take place there and what, you know, what nice of a career and lifestyle that's available as well when you graduate from there. So thank you again for joining us. Thank and you for having me. I'll just remind everyone uh, that's watching that next week we're going to be visiting with a scientist from the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. And so they're going to tell us a little bit about their Science at Sea program and uh, the really interesting technology that they use to monitor underwater organisms and habitats. So I'll say a big thank you to the Canadian Coast Guard for supporting the adopt -a ship program and a big thank you to Jean Marie and to everyone who tuned in for today's presentation. And we hope to see you at this time next week. Take Bye. care.